Welcome to the second presentation on the second day of talks for our Donner Doom conference. We have Catherine Siegfried Speller, who is an assistant professor in the Department of Computer and Information Technology here at Purdue University. Dr. Siegfried Speller has multiple publications, book chapters, conference paper presentations, including international presentations in India, Ireland, Russia, and South Korea on the who and why of cybercrime. Specifically, she studies the personality characteristics and socio-legal factors associated with cyber deviance, including internet child pornography use, hacking, cyber bullying, trolling, cyber threats via social media, and others. As a forensic research psychologist, she is also interested in the role of ethics in digital forensics and internet-based research. Today, she will present a talk titled Witnessing a Rise of Uninhabited Bridges Meet the Internet Troll. Now please silence your electronic devices, but don't put them away. We encourage you to tweet with the hashtag Dawn or Doom and post to Facebook, Snapchat, Instagram, or whatever social site you might prefer. And please welcome Dr. Siegfried Speller. Thank you. Good morning, everyone. So um, today, it's pretty laid back. Feel free to ask questions, interrupt me in the middle of the talk. I want this to be much more dynamic than me just lecturing for an hour. And the one thing I want to hear is, how many of you know what an internet troll is? Oh, good. Cool. OK. Um, how many of you know that there's different types of internet trolling? All right. So that's what we're really going to focus on today is the different types of internet trolling. And then towards the end, I'm really going to focus on rip trolling. So if you're not familiar with that, you will be in about an hour. So first thing I need to warn you about, in the next 60 minutes, there will be profanity. If you have ever been on the internet and you haven't seen a cuss word, I don't know where you're going because that's not where I go. So first thing, there will be profanity. The next thing is you will probably be offended. That's part of what internet trolling is about, is really trying to get you to be offended and react to them. So I'm going to have different videos, different slides up here. If you catch yourself being offended, then congratulations, the troll was successful. The next thing I'm going to let you know is you're going to feel a variety of emotions. You'll probably be angry. You're going to be disgusted. You might be confused. You're going to wonder who the hell these people are. We're going to talk about all of these things. And finally, welcome to the internet and welcome to this presentation. So trolls. When we talk about trolling, it's something we've seen in the media. So this is from The Hobbit, different images from cartoons. But when I think about trolls, I think about the 90s and the scariest ones of them all. So there was this wonderful attempt at making these lovely creatures into something that we wanted to collect. Now, if you think about trolling, though, and you read about the literature, they're supposed to be disgusting. They're kind of vile. They smell bad. All of these terrible characteristics. So when you think about internet trolling, transition that into the cyber world as well. A lot of people think about trolls as disgusting creatures, disgusting people. Okay, some of you are nodding, yep. All right, so where do we start? Why did I title this Uninhabited Bridges? Well, the story of trolls starts with them living under the bridge. So how many of you heard the story of the three billy goats gruff? All right, good. Some of you are waving. Some of you have no idea. That's OK. So it's an old story from the 1840s. And essentially, there were three goats related, gruff. And they were all brothers, historically. And there was the youngest to the oldest. And so the way the story goes is there was a troll that lived under the bridge. And the troll would snatch anybody who tried to cross that bridge. And there was uh, better greener pastures on that other side. And so the little baby goat went first. And the troll, troll jumped out and said, you know, who's that tip tapping across my bridge? And he says, oh, it's just me, the littlest of the gruffs. Well, I'm going to eat you for trying to cross my bridge. And of course, the baby goat says, well, don't eat me. There's a bigger one coming right behind me. My middle brother is much bigger. He's much tastier. So the troll says, OK. He lets the baby goat cross the bridge. You can imagine this keeps going until the oldest, the biggest, the wisest of the billy goats comes across. He then attacks the troll, knocks him off the bridge, and it's safe for everybody to cross after that. So this is one of those stories about how we don't want to be too selfish. right? Um, so this kind of has a moral to the story. Now, <laughs> we are moving from the uninhabited bridges to the internet world. So what's really interesting about trolling is that they're really trying to skirt that boundary between what is First Amendment rights and what is cyberbullying. And so in the United States, 
we have First Amendment rights. There's other countries that do not have this. And so you'll see that in Australia, New Zealand, and the UK, people have been arrested for tolling. We have not had that happen here. Now, could they be arrested for electronic harassment? Possibly. But again, this is something really difficult for prosecutors to target because it is that fine line. And again, they're just trying to have fun, right? This is the idea of what the troll is all about. So through the next, again, 60 minutes, start thinking about the different examples I'm giving you and whether or not you think that violates First Amendment rights, whether or not you think that troll has crossed that line. So traditional bullying versus cyberbullying versus trolling, I want to make sure that we all understand the differences. So traditional bullying, what do you guys think about with traditional bullying? Stealing your lunch money, good. So there tends to be power involved. There's a stronger, bigger person that's taking something from somebody else who's weaker, right? What else? Fighting you. Fighting you? Good. I always think about getting shoved into the locker. Anything else? Name calling, good. And again, with that traditional bullying, it's physically occurring face to face, right? So you're getting the name called, you're getting shoved into that locker. There's a physical component to it. So when you move into cyberbullying, how is that changing? Yeah, so it's still hovering over you. It's not as physical anymore. That's still confrontational. And what else makes it difficult to shut down a cyberbully? Yeah, it can be anonymous, good. And what are you going to do? Just tell your kid or your friend to just take down their Facebook page, shut down social media? They're not going to do that. And so even if they do, this cyber bully can come up with a fake Facebook page and still start um, bullying you, right? Start sending you anonymous emails, texting, spoofing, all these different things. So we have traditional bullying. We now have cyber bullying. So how is this different from trolling? Right, so they're not going to extort often. What else? That's the big one. They don't know their target. So when we think about cyberbullying, traditionally you're bullying somebody that you know from school or someone that you've met. When we talk about trolling, it's purely anonymous. They don't care who it is that they're targeting, and you don't know who's targeting you as well. That's kind of the fun of it. The fun is that you are getting upset by somebody that you've never met in your entire life. And that's what the troll is. So think about cyberbullying and trolling are very similar, except whether or not they know the individual. So here's some just examples of it, of cyberbullying. Um, this was a straw poll online where a girl was voted the ugliest girl in high school. This happened um, this past year. And then with trolling examples, here's one. You're a pathetic and ugly subhuman. You should kill yourself. So again, coming from somebody completely anonymous. So trolls, when we first start thinking about them, and they've transitioned and changed quite a bit in the subculture, but currently, you know, when they first started, they were really all about being tricksters. They were pranksters. These are individuals that are considered agents of chaos. And one of the things they really started with is the famous bait and switch. So the goal, again, they don't really know anybody. They're going to post things online, have you click on something. It's going to take you to a link, and it's not where you want it to go. So here's some really famous examples for your own amusement. So imagine you thought you were clicking on a recipe and now you're here watching this video and you don't really know what's happening, but it's like a train wreck. You can't stop watching. <laughs> and you don't, you know, you're probably going to replay it because you did I miss a joke? Why was this funny? What just happened? And again, these videos have millions of hits on them. So millions of people have gone and watched this video or possibly been tricked into viewing it. Here's another one of my favorites.
Again. Oh. I know. <laughs> <laughs> and I might have watched these for quite a few hours. So the point is that this is where trolling really started. It was all about tricking people, and it was the bait and switch. So Rick Rolling is another popular one. Some of you are nodding you've heard of. Um, I didn't find that as amusing as these two, personally. So um, again, if you're ever feeling down, sad, really worth going back to YouTube and watching these videos over and over again. But the famous bait and switch is really where we started with trolling. So moving from there. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was fun. <laughs> so now what we see is that trolls really try to disrupt conversations online. So if you've ever read the YouTube comments or the comments in general on any sort of post, this is the goal. The goal is for them to mix in with the general population. You don't realize they're trolling you. And they're playing devil's advocate. So when you think back to being in the classroom, we all hated the devil's advocate. This is the troll online, the devil's advocate. So it's for amusement. And it, again, it's that controversial humor. So just like this says, their goal is to really just piss you off. That, and if they succeed at that, then they won. You've been trolled. So they engage in that online baiting that we saw. And they do this with complete strangers. And it's just for the fun of it. So there's a great article where it's called, Trolls Just Want to Have Fun. And that's really what they're trying to do here. So I have some examples. <laughs> So the Brendan Sullivan one is actually interesting. This is a fake example of um, a, a guy who created two accounts, so one being an ultra-conservative and one being very liberal. And he had these fights going on online, and everyone around it was butt of the joke. They didn't realize that this was fake. And so people would chime in saying, like, you're being mean to the person. You know, you should stop. And he was just trying to show, like, why are you so concerned with what two people are saying online? You can turn off your computer, walk away, the conversation ends, and it's over. So, here he's saying Fight Club rate, you know, ranked five out of seven. He goes five out of seven. That's an interesting grading scale, never seen it before. And immediately Brandon comes back with vulgarity. I thought it was dark and mysterious, just like the dark night. And so again, he's just going in and baiting him and trying to get him into this fight. Another one is, um, again, chatting with a completely random stranger. Name and age, what about it? What's yours? What does yours mean? Yours, oh, OK. What is your name and age? Could you capitalize that W and add a question mark? And then I will answer. <laughs> what happens if your name and age, sir? Oh, so close, but you need a space before sir. <laughs> so again, this is the internet troll just starting to bait somebody, trying to get them into that fight. And they're just having fun with the person. So this is all what it comes down with. If you've ever seen this, you know, you mad bro, the idea is, why are you so upset when you are having a conversation with a complete stranger online? Why are you get, getting so irate about it? So this is a quote from a troll. She said, the belief that anyone truly cares about your opinion on an online forum is ludicrous and arrogant. So the idea, too, of what trolls are trying to do is hold up that mirror to society. Why do you think your opinion is so important? Why do you think it matters? Why do you think people even want to hear it? So when you pull up that news article and you scroll down to the comment page and you're about to write that comment, do you really think people care? Have you changed the world? Did you make a dent? No. In fact, the troll's going to come back and remind you that nobody cares about your opinion. And the fact that you think your opinion is so important is a problem. So maybe society is narcissistic, a little selfish. And so again, this is the idea. Why are you so mad, bro? Why are you yelling at someone you've never met online? The goal for the internet troll is something called lols. And the lols is a specific type of laughter. Think of it as an evil laughter. It's an aggressive, morally ambiguous laughter. And again, it's all because you've inflicted some sort of emotional harm. So now this is when we're getting into the darker side of trolling. So originally, they were interested in lols, L-O-L-Z. And now you're seeing the U. The U means more emotional distress. So this is where you're going to start seeing some of the trolling that most of you are probably familiar with, where they're actually degrading people's character, where they're saying hateful things, where they're using profanity. So we'll go into some of those examples. So the first one is flame trolling. How many of you have heard of flame trolling? Good. Probably the most popular one. So the goal is to post offensive comments, usually using every cuss word in the book. And what the goal is to bait the person and then cause a flame. So you're going to flame bait, say something very rude, something terrible. You're hoping that person flames back at you. If you get the flame, you were successful in a flame war. So the goal is a flame war. 
there's great memes that are going around on how to have a successful flame war. Number one, say God doesn't exist. Uh -huh. Number two, say he does exist. So again, picking a side, think devil's advocate. Go online to any forum, make a stance, and then watch the flame war begin. Hmm? Yeah, and then say it's just your opinion. And that's a good point to bring up. Thanks for saying that. A lot of trolls are not necessarily taking a stance on a side, and they actually agree with that stance. So again, think devil's advocate. They're really kind of reading the forums. Right, right. I, yes, yes. So another one up there, if you guys can't read it, um, say that ponies are great or say that ponies are cancerous. Another great way to start a war. And guns are awesome and horrible. So picking a side. This one was posted on PETA. <laughs> on a forum for PETA, so <laughs> some of you are laughing, yeah. <laughs> so again, you can imagine that uh, on the forum, forum for PETA, they didn't think it was very funny. But again, take something that's very extreme, post a picture, and see how people respond. This one was posted on a feminist forum. So something so simple as going to a website, posting a picture, and then watch people explode. Flame war. The next one is grammar trolling, one of my favorites. I feel like most professors are probably grammar trolls, so people only apply or reply to comments to correct grammar. So here's some great examples. Again, sorry for the profanity, but this is trolling. So immediately somebody wrote something, F fake people that talk crap, and then they corrected the spelling for people, shut up Daniel, I'm mad. I'm, looking at, I'm not looking at spell check, correct the spelling to Daniel, stop it, get off my page. So again, this person is already exploding, and the point is, is that they're fighting about something that wasn't related to the original comment, right? They've kind of put them on that tangent. This one's another one of my favorites. When are you gonna grow a pair? <laughs> Call me. So the troll wrote back and grew a pair. This, uh, just wanna let you know you're beautiful, cough. Um, you know, you forgot that. Or, Apostrophe, grammar, Nazi to the rescue, you're an ass. Again, it's your. So people just kind of coming in, correcting the spelling. The last one coming back again from the one that's fake. So do remember this is a fake one. It says, I don't get gay marriage. Two men doing that, it's just wrong. And he comes in saying, um, where's the little comment, about how they're straight. And he says, what, you're comparing yourself now to, to water. So there's another argument. Strategic trolling. So this one is pretty popular because of Anonymous. So how many of you heard of Anonymous? Oh, fantastic, good. All right, so this is when a group of individuals get together for a specific cause and they try to organize an attack. And these attacks could occur for weeks or months at a time. So Anonymous is one of the popular ones. I have a video for you guys. And one of the groups that they targeted several years ago was Scientology. Okay, whoops. Well, wow, that's from Sid, I'm playing football. Hello, leaders of Scientology. We are anonymous. Over the years, we have been watching you, your campaigns of misinformation, your suppression of dissent, your litigious nature. All of these things have caught our eye. With the leakage of your latest propaganda video into mainstream circulation, the extent of your malign influence over those who have come to trust you as leaders has been made clear to us. Anonymous has therefore decided that your organization should be destroyed for the good of your followers, for the good of mankind, and for our own enjoyment. We shall proceed to expel you from the internet and systematically dismantle the Church of Scientology in its present form. We recognize you as serious opponents and do not expect our campaign to be completed in a short time frame. However, you will not prevail forever against the angry masses of the body politic, your choice of methods. Your hypocrisy and the general lawlessness of your organization have sounded its death now. You have nowhere to hide, because we are everywhere. You will find no recourse in attack, because for each of us that falls, ten more will take this place. We are cognizant of the many who may... Okay, so Anonymous decided that... Go away. That they were going to target Scientology. So Scientology um, was censoring a video of... Tom Cruise that was going around. Anonymous is against internet censorship. And so they decided to target the Church of Scientology. Some of the things that they did, they actually went on Craigslist and posted um, ads 
on how to get rid of invisible dead alien spirits in your body. So then people could go and um, you know, sign up for that and gain more information. They also DDoS attacks, shut down websites. So they did a lot, and this all came from strategic trolling. So that organization. And you can imagine, I tell my students, there's 42% of the world has access to the internet. That's an army of people. If you create a video like Anonymous did, and you have five million hits, which is what they had on that one video, now you have an army of people that are all gonna be strategically trolling one organization. Another one that they did was Operation ISIS, and this was last year, um, December 11th. And what they did was they did the exact same thing. They sent out some different propaganda, created videos, and they said, we're gonna troll ISIS on Twitter. And so they started sending around different memes, and this was the day of trolling for ISIS. So again, very powerful statements from a group of individuals that you know probably have never met before, many of them, all online. The last one is the one that we're gonna talk about the most today, and this is RIP trolling. So rest in peace trolling, or mem memorial page trolling. So this is trolling where um, an individual will post offensive comments to a Facebook page that was created because somebody has passed away. So this is probably one of the darkest sides of trolling. And again, I'm gonna try to give you an understanding behind the subculture behind it, and this is gonna be part of that dawn or doom idea. So it usually targets kids who have committed suicide or had some sort of tragic experience. So this one right here, um, she committed suicide and a picture was posted that said, um, help me mommy, it's hot in hell. So that got posted on the Facebook page. This individual got hit by a bus and was killed. Um, you can't see the one behind it, it got covered up, but it was a picture of, it said, um, what do you do when somebody's drowning? And the sign says LOL. And it was for two twins who drowned in a pool that got posted to a Facebook page. Now, these are very tame compared to what I could tell you and show you. So examples would be pictures of dead babies will get posted to people's Facebook pages, um, all kinds of things. So take this and think, what is the darkest side that humanity has to offer? Those exist somewhere on the internet. So the story of Natasha McBride, she was bullied, she was 15 years old and she was bullied on Facebook and then jumped in front of a train and committed suicide the next day. So after this happened, her parents created a Facebook memorial page talking about uh, cyberbullying, and these memes were created by somebody named Sean Duffy. So Sean Duffy started targeting her. Now again, this is, we're talking about trolling, it's anonymous. Sean had never met her, did not know Natasha, but knew about her because the Facebook page got created. So he ended up being arrested and again, this was not in the United States. And he received 18 weeks. So 18 weeks in jail for what happened, for him trolling the memorial page. So again, you're probably thinking, who are these rip trolls? Who would do something like this? So we went from you know, fun videos, rick rolling, to dancing troll heads, to grammar trolling, to something like this, where people are actually targeting memorial pages. So we're gonna talk about it. In general, there's two different types. The first type is the sadistic group. So there's been um, recent research, the first one in 2014 by Buckles, was the first group to really start looking at the personality traits of trolls. And what they found is that they're sadistic. So they enjoy um, hurting other people and they get pleasure from that. And they also have psychopathic traits. And a study that we just finished up with my student and I uh, was looking at the personality traits between people who engage in trolling and people who engage in rip trolling. So differentiating those groups. And what we found is that 20% of individuals who admitted to trolling admitted to rip trolling. So not everybody who trolls is a rip troller. That's the first thing. So there's a smaller group of them, only 20%. And what we found is that they were even more psychopathic in traits compared to the people that troll in general. And we also found that they have low moral values. So some of you are probably like, yeah, that makes sense, right? Okay. So what we can say is that there are personality traits that can predict somebody who's engaging in rip trolling behaviors. So first group takes pleasure. The second group has a philosophical argument for why they're doing this. They see it as they're following a moral code and their moral code says that they will not target somebody who has a legitimate Facebook page honoring someone who's deceased. So if you're a family member and you lost somebody and it's a legitimate Facebook page, that troll will not target you. 
they target what they call grief tourists. The grief tourists are people who make Facebook pages for people that they don't even know. Or they are people who go to a Facebook page for someone they've never met before and offer their condolences. The argument, again, a great quote from a troll, collective mourning by people who have never met is tacky. This is boredom and a pathological need for attention masquerading as grief. So this is an example. So a famous uh, rip troll created a Facebook page honoring this fake woman and her death. And look at all these people coming and chiming and saying how wonderful she was, how they will miss her. They have never met this person before because she does not exist. So when we think about rip trolling, we want to remember that there's different groups. There's the groups that target the grief tourists, and then there's the group that are sadistic and they're targeting anybody like that Sean Duffy that I showed before. So the idea is that they're challenging society's passive grieving. This need to go online and feel like you're a part of something when you really aren't a part of anything. So when you, they're also the ones that are going to, every time a, or some sort of disaster occurs and we change our Facebook profile picture to some sort of different ribbon honoring somebody, some of you are nodding, nodding, sorry. The trolls are going to say, why are you doing that? You've never been to Paris. You don't know anybody in Paris. Why are all of a sudden you feeling so sad for something like this when you don't even feel sad for the things happening in your own backyard, for the things that are happening in your own family? Why are you so concerned with things <coughs> far away from you that you have no control over? They also argue that the media tends to only discuss Sad cases of people who have committed suicide or who have tragically died if they're young, attractive women or children. So again, they tend to create those Facebook pages memori or memorializing fake people, and they tend to target the young, attractive women. They'll create Facebook pages of other minority groups, and they don't get the flood from the grief tourists. So they're again showing the bias that society has towards certain groups of people when they pass away. So again, the media tends to publicize certain deaths over others. And trolls challenge that social bias. That's really what they're all about. So the question that I have for you guys is, do trolls have a point? Do these rip trolls have a point? The first thing that they want you to know is that the internet is not all roses and sunshine. And that they think that they're trying to get you to see this dark side of humanity. So you create this Facebook page, you have all these people flooding in with these comments, we're so sorry for your loss. Well, how sincere is that? How sincere is it that a complete stranger you've never met is telling you that they're sorry? Is there something behind that? Wouldn't it mean more if a family member or a friend said something? Why are we so interested in public grieving? Or this public process in general? Sharing everything on the internet. So if yes, if they are trying to show us something, if they're trying to teach us something, then maybe it's a wake-up call that some of these trolls are interested in. Maybe it's this idea that they're holding up that mirror to society. They're making us self-reflect. So a famous quote, remember, truth be told, if you're looking for the guilty, you need to only look in the mirror. So maybe some rip trolls could be the dawn of the internet. A chance for us to really self-reflect. Take a moment to ask ourselves why we're engaging in these behaviors, why we changed our Facebook profile in solidarity for something that we really maybe don't even understand. If not, the other side of this is that trolls are turning the web into a cesspool of aggression and violence. That's a great quote. And if you're on that side, then you're going to say that this is the doom of the internet. Any questions? Yeah. Um, I just wanted to know um, what do you see the what, what do you see the future of this uh, voting movement is going to end, and when do people mind their own business and not care about what other people are doing? Oh, so <laughs> sorry, I'm not used to this. Um, I don't think trolling will stop. I think it's going to continue to morph, just like we've seen it starting with tricksters and kind of moving into these different types. Um, but I do think that maybe as Maybe as we get older, we're not as interested in what the comments are anymore. 
but maybe we're bored, and so we're reading the comment section, and we kind of get sucked into it. So I also see it as a maturity part as well. Yeah. So I don't think it's going away. Yeah. Did you say trolling is gendered? Yeah, so the research shows um, that the majority of trolls are going to be, they're more likely to be men, but there are female trolls still that engage in it, absolutely. Yep. Mm. I think that people need to put their emotions aside more. Yeah. Which is something you actually haven't talked about, but actually some folks do agree with. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I, I, think it, I think it is important that, um, again, some tools have a moral code, and they're interested in arguments that aren't, aren't as heated with the emotion side of it. So can we have a conversation that's based on facts before we start name calling and start throwing stuff out there? Like you said, when you start with, this is just my opinion, that's okay that people have opinions and they're different from yours. There's no need to start attacking, and that's the flame part of it, that a lot of them want people to realize, that it's not fixing the situation at all when you start going into that, that road. I, I like to call it offensive words, mm -hmm. that they should be offensive. Right. Right. Yeah. Eric. Do you believe that the moral code that trolls live by do you believe that that's something that they strictly follow, or is it more of an excuse for their actions? Ooh, nice. So um, it can be both, right? So I think there's going to be trolls that really do follow rules, and they think that because they follow those rules, it's OK. So just like individuals that hack. You know, if I'm hacking uh, corporations, people that take money from others, then it's OK. There's that kind of that Robin Hood mentality to it. So I think with trolling behaviors, you're going to see people that justify their actions even though it could be causing harm and uh, disrupting right, uh, people's behavior. So yeah, it's going to be both, absolutely. Just because they have a moral code doesn't mean it's necessarily right. Yeah. So how would you advise to like, deal with trolls? Oh, yeah. Like, somebody starts trolling you, like, what are some steps that you would try to work So the famous one online right now that's going around is don't feed the trolls. Um, has, have you guys seen that before? Yeah, so essentially what that means is just when they start baiting you and they start calling you names or they start um, being counter-argumentative, counter then just don't buy into it. And really ask yourself, why are you interested anyway? You know, maybe make your comment, post it, have your piece, and walk away. Close down the laptop. There's no need to sit there and wait to see who's going to comment back. And I feel like that's where the, the flame starts happening and the war starts happening. So yeah, just don't feed into it. And then also realize, too, I think um, you can't trust people. So you might have a legitimate conversation with a stranger online once every while, right? Otherwise, you're probably dealing with trolls. Yeah. Yeah. So how so? Just with more censorship, there, there has to be some form of outlet for people to talk about their opinions. Right, right. And I think, too, that's why a lot of people go online and do it, because of, it's anonymous for a lot of people. And so maybe you're not able to have these conversations in the physical world that you live in. So you can go online and have these conversations in a cyber world, and it's a bit safer. Yeah, so it's definitely an outlet, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, it might be hard to say for like, uh, trolls in general, but would you say an would it be easier to like ask if anonymous were more of a Donovan kind of deal? Like, are uh, they being more of a positive effect, or are they really contributing to a more negative like environment? Yeah. Um, so that's a that's an interesting an interesting point. So I think what anonymous has shown is that the internet is powerful. So you can take people again who have never met before and unite them online in a cyberspace, and they join in the physical world and protest because that's what we saw with um, the ninety nine percent movement. That's what we saw with um, the um, Operation Payback, Scientology, so all of these different things. I think that's what's powerful about Anonymous, and that's what they've shown is that if people want to unite, you can unite online in the cyberspace and then transition into the real world. Right, I'm just using that as the example. So in your experience and in your research, what are some of the more effective ways that online communities have, I guess, sort of um, 
reduce the impact of trolling or, you know, how, whether it's technological mm -hmm. or sociological, like what are people doing to keep their online communities healthy and what works and what doesn't? Right. A lot of it's just self-awareness. So you'll go online and you'll see um, comments like moderators will have at the bottom that says if you're trolling or if you're posting, you know, defamation, saying terrible things, like you will be you know, monitored and taken down. So I think that's a lot of it is just putting awareness out there that people are doing these things and that they're doing it just for fun. And so not to take it, I don't want to say not to take it seriously, but not to buy into it. And so part of it is just the awareness. Yeah, and that's more important than anything I would say. Because if you're aware of it, then you won't feed into it or you'll report the individual and shut them down. Because the, the, again, the goal of the troll is to not get noticed. So they're trolling you without you knowing they're a troll. So you'll, uh, if you start reading some of the comments, someone will get called out as a troll and then usually the little troll face will pop up and then they disappear. And then they move on to a new thread or a new forum. Yeah, so again, it's just making it aware so that you can call them out early so then they'll leave. When does it stop being trolling and become cyber harassment or cyber bullying? Yeah, good. So um, again, the, the cyber harassment and trolling is interesting because harassment is easier to talk about when it has that, um, that component where I know the person. So if you think about bullying, if you think about harassment, I know the person, it's easy for them to say who it is that's targeting them. And um, with trolling, I mean, it's, what are you gonna do? Like, file something against somebody in Russia? I mean, that's the, the complexity of this. Like, where are these people coming from? And so you would have to really, again, show that it's violating the First Amendment rights. And I don't know if we've had a case like that quite yet. Yep. In your research, um, what internet space is trolled the most? Yeah, um, I don't know if I know, if I can say which one is more popular. I would say YouTube comments are really great if you want to kind of read through them. Um, 4chan, we talked about that yesterday. It's a nice, nice little place to go check out. Um, any sort of news, newspaper article that gets posted. And then again, if you uh, think about extreme. So if you want to go to Fox News, you're probably going to see some comments there. If you go to you know, specific you know, websites for political candidates, you're going to probably see those comments as well, just like I showed with the PETA, right, of the individuals kind of starting a fight in a forum. So the best fights happen when it tends to be more of an extreme kind of group perspective, and you roll in. Yeah? Is there an overlap with clickbait? What's that? Where they, somebody puts something out so... Oh. An image. Yeah. Yeah just to have people click on it so that they'll download something that right. might be harmful. To that might be harmful, like malware. Yeah. So I do think that, uh, absolutely, so malware writers, um, individuals that are interested in spreading viruses will definitely use trolling, you know, post images like that to try to bait somebody to click on it, but I don't think that that's the point of what trolling is. Okay. So that would be a different type of behavior. That's a good question. Oh, good. So does anyone know what catfishing is? My like, favorite Wednesday night TV show. <laughs> so if you guys have not watched it, it is fantastic. So catfishing is when you essentially create a, a fake profile and you pretend to be somebody else and you end up um, engaging in an online relationship with somebody you've never met. And that's the catfish. Um, so is catfishing like trolling? I would say they have different motivations behind it. So trolling, again, is really motivated by just having fun, really trying to get you to um, get into a fight or, or have an opinion and get upset about it. Catfishing, for the most part, is a mask that they use because of some sort of self-esteem issue, maybe um, something else going on in their life, and so they don't feel comfortable being who they are, so they create a mask online. So like, I guess inside the United States, anyway, people can kind of say whatever they want to say, well, the First Amendment, like other countries, maybe not. Right. Right, so, so in the United States, um, it's not that we can say whatever we want, but that if we're going to say someone has violated the First Amendment right, then it's gotta be pretty serious. Okay. Absolutely, so cyber harassment, um, so electronic true. harassment. Almost hmm? anything can be an opinion, right? Right, almost anything can be an opinion and you have to show um, some sort of distress. And again, what you might be upset about might be different from what he's upset about. So that also makes it really difficult. You might think that the trolling comment was the worst thing ever and he laughs and shut his computer off. So that's also what makes this really difficult is trying to understand how do we, how do we um, control a behavior that we all respond to differently. 
Right, so intent is another big thing, absolutely. Yeah. There was this question, it's more kind of like egg and chicken question. Would you say that the internet kind of brought unsolved, what, what did trolls do before the internet? <laughs> <laughs> I always tell people they were the devil ad advocate in class. Um, so, I mean, that's where I would imagine them being, like before the internet existed. These were the individuals that liked having discussions and, um, you know, and always playing the devil's advocate. Right, right. And so I, I think, too, that the trolls are, I mean, that's a small group of people that are willing to play that role, whereas when you go online, it, you, you're anonymous again, right? You have that cloak of safety. And so the number of people that are probably willing to kind of skirt that line is going to increase because they don't have to worry about the physical component to it. Yes. Oh, hey, is your refrigerator running? You better go crack. Yeah, my brother still does that. There's a great app called Prank Dial. So, yeah, it, it is. It's just, again, when you think about it, they're, they're the tricksters. They're the ones that were having fun. Great question. So there is research showing that individuals who engage in cyberbullying were also bullied. So there's quite a few of them that um, were victims and are also what we call instigators. Now, there's very few studies, I think I'm the only one, who has um, looked at the relationship between trolling and cyberbullying. So are these two different distinct behaviors? If you cyberbully, are you likely to troll as well? And the answer to that is yes that the majority of people who are cyberbullying are also trolling. There's a very small group of people that are cyberbullies only, or what we call trolls only. So again, I think that suggests that this is much more of a kind of cyber deviant behavior online, where not only do uh, cyberbullies target people that they know, but then a lot of them are gonna go online and troll people that they don't know either. And I think that comes to with a lack of communication skills, and being able to talk about your opinions and emotions in a healthy way. Or at least that's kind of what the research has shown. Yeah, but yes, so if you are a victim of cyberbullying, statistically you're more likely to also become a cyberbully. Good question. Yeah. So what are some outlets for trolls? And I think, I think maybe part of the problem with trolls is like modern life, if you kind of think about it, it's kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Like we don't have to hunt for survival. So a lot of it is morning. boredom, yeah, so yeah. What are some like healthy outlets? Healthy outlets. <laughs> I guess I would suggest video gaming, but that's where a lot of trolling happens as well, right? <laughs> um, <laughs> if you've ever ever played online video games, um, it's, that's quite a bit of trolling goes on there as well. I don't know what I would suggest. I don't know what would be the therapy, right, that I would recommend to somebody who's a troller. Uh, maybe, you know, they're so interested in holding up a mirror to society, maybe I would challenge them and say, hold up the mirror to yourself and really see why it is that you're engaging in this behavior. Is it because it's sadistic and you enjoy it, you're getting pleasure out of it, or are you really following this moral code? Or like Eric was saying, is this moral code more of something that is an excuse? So I would challenge that. I would say hold up the mirror to yourself and see, see where you are. Um, Right. With your, you know, the way that, let's take it back to what did the trolls do before the internet? Mm -hmm. Well, as parents now come into the age of being more versed with the internet and how it behaves, right. will the, you know, is it a little different as their children will emulate or at least try to yeah. their behavior or how do, how do you go forward? So there's a great researcher, if you guys are interested in this, um, Whitney Phillips, she, she focused her entire dissertation on this work and she has a book on um, why we can't have nice things. And she, she has said this. She said that there's no point in legislating something like trolling and trying to criminalize it because you're not teaching anything and you're not getting rid of the behavior. So if we think of how many behaviors have been criminalized and people just keep doing it anyway, right? Um, electronic harassment, a great example of that. Um, so if you're, gonna, if you're gonna really try to curb this and you need to understand why is it occurring, you need to have that education behind it. And I think that that's where we lack. There's not a lot of research in this. And so as far as you know, trolling research goes, it's only been around for the last few years. But I don't think writing a law would make this go away. Absolutely, I, it just would not happen. If anything, they're gonna find other techniques and ways to be anonymous 
to protect their identity online and engage in the exact same behaviors. Oh, I don't know. I um, with the there, there was a talk uh, about a, a Microsoft artificial intelligence that mm -hmm. was targeted by trolls and became racist, and mm -hmm. uh, they took it down after a day. Yeah, but yeah. they tried a similar project in China. that right. didn't have that problem at all. Right. Uh, the, the implication was the Chinese internet is more the censorship uh, behind gentler. it. Mm hmm. Yeah, so I don't know if I would argue that that has fixed the problem or if that has just moved people into a different realm of uh, cyber criminal behavior. So, but I don't think that would fix it. Yeah, yeah. There's just something in here that I, I can't quite get my head around, but let me see if I can go at it. But yeah. If we accept the idea that the internet, in fact, has created more uh, self-identified and self-consciously isolated or homogenous communities of people. Mm -hmm. I'm worried that anybody that presents any kind, I can see why you would do it for lols, right? I can also <laughs> see why you would do it maliciously. Right. But I could also see somebody who just says, well, I, I think that's wrong. I don't believe in supply-side economics. Now, does that make me a troll then? Because I just, I'm not um, adopting the prevailing mm -hmm. orthodoxy of that group that right. I'm now commenting in. Right. Because I kind of, I'd not, I'd, the rip trolling, rip trolling. Is brand new to me. The Greek tourist idea. Interesting. Yes. And, uh, and immediately I think, yeah, I know a whole pile of people who engage in that kind of surrogate behavior. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like why people become fans of teams that they're not even an alumnus of. Because right. they just need to be associated with winning somehow. Right, right. right. So there's something in there, but I'd be worried mm -hmm. on the other side that somehow any differently divergent opinion right. was seen as trolling. And that's become more of a problem because whereas there used to be a more Catholic mm -hmm. with a small C, Right. You're more likely to experience more different opinions. Now you're more likely to be either you're in the Hillary camp or the Trump camp, and if you're if you wander into the wrong village, right, like look out, right. Well, and so that's what Whitney Phillips will say when we talk about criminalizing the behavior. Is that if you start criminalizing trolling, you're going to catch people that just have a legitimate opinion that's different than yours, and you got into an awesome debate online. And so again, trolls do not necessarily they don't hold that opinion. So when they get into the debate, that's what's different from someone who just has an opinion and is trying to have a conversation online. The troll does not hold that opinion. They're just trying to find whatever best way it is for them to start that argument. Does that help? But again, that's what Whitney argues is that if you talk about criminalizing it, you're going to catch people like you that really just have a, you know, a passionate opinion on something, get into a debate, or maybe are going online and trying to change people's attitudes towards something, which people do. They'll go to forums and maybe try to... Um, convince them that they're, they should switch to the other side. And um, yeah, that's what she's worried about. Absolutely, so good point. Now you could put a question into a chat, in, in, into a, a search box, like how high is Trump Tower? Sometimes you look at the replies and it, it, the reply is, I don't know. Mm -hmm. I could consider that trolling. I mean, why would anyone care that you don't know? Or why would you post that? But right. Well, and so most likely, exactly. So the troll, so I, the person who posts, I don't know, would not be the troll, but the person who comes back and says, really, that's all you have to contribute? You know, that's, that's your intellectual capacity? That's the troll. It's trying to get you to realize you took time to write, I don't know. Nobody cares. Thank you for that. Wasted my time. So again, that's, that would be the troll's response to that. But for you writing, I don't know, isn't the troll. So again, I think, they're, I think they're baiting, I think trolling works because they know how people work. And they know that people like to get into arguments, like to stand for something. And so again, that's the human nature component of it. That's the social engineering side of it. They know how people work. But no, like they think that wanting to troll is a part of human 
in nature? That's, so I think, based on my research, a, a small proportion of people will agree with that statement, but I don't think all trolls think that it's human nature for people to go online and post dead pictures of babies on rip pages. That might be a little far. So, yeah. Yeah? I guess, like, so it was suggested that you might try to curb the attitude, but just as trolling could be, like, could become cyberbullying, perhaps mm -hmm. trolling is just an extension of social critique or social commentary. Yeah, I think it's an extreme part of that, absolutely. So is there any chance we could perhaps guide trolling into a more healthier function for society so people are, feel free to... So I think if you, uh, I, and this is, the image I have is herding cats with rabies. Fair. So yeah, I can imagine we're gonna, we're gonna herd this behavior and make it into a positive, constructive form for society and then everyone, yeah, you can't put all the ra cats with rabies in a room. So this is, that's what I just imagine happening, exploding on the internet. Yeah. Is there a particular age group where this happens more? Yeah, so it tends to be younger, um, young white men for the most part, that troll. But again, I should say women do this too, so that's just, you know, it's not just, it's not just men. Yeah. That's fantastic. So, um, Research has shown, so the Buckles study that was conducted in 2014 showed that they scored high on narcissism. So yes, it is a narcissistic behavior. They think that um, what they're doing is this higher moral code, some of them. Now, they also, though, see that their behavior is this reflection of the mirror to other people's narcissism. But yes, they did score higher on narcissistic behaviors. Mm -hmm. And uh, is that like a form of trolling? So I haven't seen the South Park episode. Okay, so basically, like, they'll like threaten businesses and to give them like a two, st like a two star review on Yelp if they don't like, uh, like do what they want, like give them like free dessert. But like, uh, it's just basically like making fun of the fact that like people like will give horrible reviews to like actually like good companies on like Yelp. Oh, uh, okay. Just kind of like trash on them. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, yeah, there was um, the, I think it was the Brendan one, the one I mentioned that was fake. That he actually went to one of the company's websites, said that he complained that there wasn't enough strawberries in the cereal or something stupid. And they responded back with, well, can you send me your, send me a private message with your address and we'll send you a new box of whatever. And he kept responding with his address in the forum instead of following directions because he's just trying to aggravate them. Finally, he said, I'm sorry, this doesn't seem to be working. Here's my social security number so you can get a hold of me. Yeah, and just starts posting all this crazy stuff. And they had no idea that they were being trolled. So it was, and he, I think, I, it wasn't cereal. I can't remember what it was that he ended up getting. Um, I think it was Jimmy Dean sausage now that I'm remembering. And he got like a, a shipment of Jimmy Dean sausage to his house. All because he wrote a comment saying, I wasn't very happy with the number of patties or you know, the taste of them. And they went through all this trouble to make him happy. And they were being trolled. All right, well, thank you guys so much.